Hello everyone this morning. Good to see you. Paul Tranny. Gonna dive into uh, a uh, not a daily creative challenge. <laughs> uh, dive into Photoshop Masterclass today. So uh, super happy to have you here. You can see um, what I'm gonna talk about. It's like the principles of design. Uh, you can see them listed also on, I guess, my left side. Uh, and yeah, that's the plan. We'll kind of talk about all this stuff, like why, why you would use it, when you would use it, and uh, just work on some uh, real world use cases is the plan. So hopefully that works for you um, because I think when things don't look right, it's because you're just, you're not keeping some of this stuff in mind. And by the way, when we look at this long list, um, honestly, I don't think, it's not like you could just use one. Um, it's gonna usually take a combination of principles to make something look good. Uh, and uh, just to be honest with you, I've seen some stuff out there that I'm like, ah, oh, it needs help. I've seen my own stuff out there and I'm like, ah, oh, it needs help. And uh, that's the plan to talk about this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my screen. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, uh, fantastic. Jason is watching Star Wars. That's nice. All right, so here we are. Uh, we'll also talk plenty about Photoshop as well. So uh, this will be cool. What's up, Jesse? Susan, Rosie from New Zealand, Brandy. Cool, awesome. Andreas, cool. So this is all the stuff that you learn in art school, but this is the funny thing. If you happen to jump out there and you happen to search on, uh, disregard these fun flowers, we'll get into those in a second, uh, principles of design, you're gonna see actually uh, lots of various lists. And, uh, you know, there's like seven of them. There's the sort of thoughts on gestalt, which is making something look good. Um, and then there's also elements of design. So I've kind of kind of compiled all of those, you know, but again, none of the lists are actually exactly the same is what I've discovered, right? Um, so again, we have pattern, contrast, and similarity, emphasis, dominance, uh, balance with something, proportion, whether something's larger or smaller, and we're gonna, I'm just gonna start creating some of this stuff as well. So it should be pretty fun. And kind of showing this rather than just reading. Nobody likes to, you know, I don't need to read this stuff. Nobody wants to read, huh? Okay. Uh, harmony, movement. Let me click over here. Cool. Beatrice, cool. Uh, Dennis, yeah, self-taught by me. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. You probably, you probably know, you probably don't know as much as you think you do. Just joking. Uh, you know, proportion, harmony, uh, movement, hierarchy, and I'm gonna just start kind of creating because we know with pattern, for instance, what I'll do is I'll just create a black square right up here. And I'm gonna talk about Photoshop tips that you don't may or may not know. Here's one right off the bat that you probably don't know. If I wanna create a pattern with this square, yeah, I can create a pattern by going d to define pattern, right? We have a number of those actually right over here if we take a look, uh, the new patterns panel, right? And I could use these in here like I'm doing right now. And actually let's unclip that. Make it a new layer, let's do this. There we go, here's definitely like a pattern, obviously, right? But I kinda wanna do a different pattern with a basic shape. But I think this stuff is cool, this is very straightforward. If we are adding a pattern uh, to this, you can see it's pretty, pretty straightforward, right, overall. But I wanted to show you how to make a pattern because I think this is a really cool tip, by the way. Because if I wanted to make a lot of these little squares right over here, okay? I just made this one, right? What would you typically do? You would do a Command J to jump the layer, and then you would move it over, right? And then you do Command J to jump the layer and move it over, if I wanted to have multiple of these, right? And that takes a lot of time. You probably know, Steve, I think Steve knows this, um, as far as um, doing sort of a step and repeat in Illustrator is so fast, right? When we have that same capability in Photoshop, so check this out. I'll just take this object, I'll do a Option Command T, right? And now it's basically the transform. I held on Option Command T. Um, I think on PC it's gonna be a Control Option T, okay? But Option Command T, and then I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna move it over holding down the Shift key just like that. 
and then hit enter, right? Like that. Now, if I hold down Shift Option Command T, it'll repeat it. So the first move was the step, the second's the repeat, and now we have a pattern. Cool. Uh, Brandy's working on some patterns in, in Illustrator right now. It's so helpful. That's that's awesome. Um, super easy in uh, good old Illustrator. Fantastic. Just checking up on everything, making sure everything looks good, and I think we are good. Cool. So hopefully that was pretty cool. Pattern. We, uh, we could do something else. Again, just kind of created that pattern. Uh, we already have both, uh, we have contrast, obviously, similarity, kind of boring. I'm going to take this to the next level, though, because I'm thinking I'm going to do a, uh, a rectangle. Again, so we're going to do this one more time, by the way. We'll create this rectangle. Command Option T. I'm going to move it. I'm going to transform it. And once I create this, you got to tell me what principle of design uh, that you see showing up. So I'm gonna kind of move it over like that, right? So that's the step is the first one. Command Option T. Now we'll do Shift Option Command T. Boom, 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 boom. As many times as I want. See, I created this spiral. Let's make sure I can see chat. Yeah, it's probably Control Option T on. On a PC, sounds like. Oh, it doesn't have option at all. I mean Alt. Sorry about that. Option key, Alt key. I could say Alt key because Alt key is technically the what the option key is on. Uh, yeah. Poo. Boom. Brandy uh, nailed it. I'm so glad we're on the same page, Brandy. We totally are on the same page because you could see right over here. What are we doing? You guessed it. This one has to do with movement. You get the idea. <sighs> oh, life. Oh, brushes. What are you doing, brush? Fun stuff. Oh, yeah. Deselect. All right. So there you go. Movement. Boom. Okay, so let's play with this a little bit more. Um, I could actually kind of show you um, um, Steve, you're a smart guy as well. Also, what does this have? Hierarchy uh, has repetition as well and rhythm. So even as we look at this, I think it has movement more than anything, but you can see how uh, a number of these, it has a number of these uh, principles of design, by the way. Um, we can take a look at uh, kind of what I'm creating in the first place, because actually what you do is for the principles of design, you use the elements of design. So the elements are design, are space, color. So that's what happens when I have, you know, an image. Like this image, for instance. Let's move it over. And I'm going to be creating a different design today. This uses all the elements of design, right? So we have space, color, shape, form, value. So there's different values in here. There's not a lot of values, but there's a fair amount. A lot of texture with this cross hatching. And then there's obviously line work, right? Yours doesn't need to have all this stuff, but these are the different elements that you use, right? Pretty straightforward, right? You get it. Okay, we kind of understand these, okay? It's when we violate some of these rules, when it doesn't have like balance, for instance, or if it doesn't have hierarchy, I would just highlight, I'm gonna highlight a couple of these that I think people have the biggest problem with. I think it is, if I can hit B for brush and change my brush size. People have a problem with hierarchy and let's switch my brush too, because otherwise this, the design is gonna bother me. They're gonna have a problem with hierarchy um, and I would say balance, all right? I say some features that people actually don't um, really incorporate a lot is white space. The more, I think the more mature, mature you get at uh, designing, you start uh, removing from a piece 
and adding more white space. Um, but I think these three are probably the ones that people have the biggest problem with. All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple things and I'm gonna design something. This is something I designed the other day and this is what I was keeping in mind when I was doing all this work, right? It's this piece, right? Some of you might've already seen it in the past and we kind of click through how this uh, essentially was made. I don't, I don't wanna like remake it, right? But what does it start out as? Just, you know, this woman, right? She, of course, didn't have wings at the time, right? So I can jump in and turn those off. There she is. Here's the wings, turning those off, even turning off that background as well, right? So this is kind of what it started at, right? I decided to add wings, and honestly, all I was doing is playing with drama. I was just kind of trying to find some images with some drama, I was gonna just make something cool, because you know I kind of make this sort of thing. Uh, and then from there, it's a matter of adding wings, like I was doing here, adding a background, which actually did not have the zombies back there. And I'll be happy to go over any of these things. And then uh, started adding the zombies, the moon, and then kind of pushing everything back like so. White space is really important. All right. Let's see, Jonathan Ryder, I see you on YouTube. Oh, DeAndre is teaching this next week for his high schoolers. So what you could do, what people will usually do with the principles of design, by the way, is we can we can look at our own work and start adding these elements, because check it out. Like, yeah, it's centered at the top. Let me get my brush. Like, it has balance. See, right now it's a little bit unbalanced, right? Because there's all this space up at the top, and then it gets busy right down here, right? So what do I do there? Just add a more dramatic sky back there, right? See, now, even though there technically is stuff down here, uh, this is more balanced because it's like dark down here, and then it's dark right here as well. Okay, so that's typically what I'd take a look at. We have to take a look at the brightness and start to work on the color tone of this as well, which I did earlier. Um, but not only that, it's still eh, kind of boring. It's like, okay, right? Um, and I wanted to make her like a soothsayer, just like give her some magic, like a crown or something. So I started playing with different elements to add as well. Because right now, again, this is kind of dark. There's lots of direction. Notice how these these feathers are kind of treated as arrows that are pointing to her face, right? That's how that's working. If I took a look at the overall canvas, you can see that she's not directly in the center either, right? We don't want her directly in the center, that's gonna be boring. So if I would have cropped it right here and cut off part of this and put her in the center, it just would have been boring. That's why you wanna offset things a little bit. But this is the thing, so check this out. And actually she's a little bit off. That's the big problem I have with this right now, is you wanna visually center things, but your eye is either gonna want it to be in the center or like off to the side. But if it's kinda of close to the center, but not quite, it's gonna mess with your brain because your brain wants to align things. Like if things are tight, um, but like not touching could build a lot of tension. So honestly, what I should do for her is scoot her over a touch a little bit to make sure she's a little bit more like in the center visually, right? And I probably need to distort that wing a little bit. Okay, so let's get rid of those lines. We got that squared away. Working on the balance of this, I'll move this over so we can kind of see the principles of design as I add more to it, but I actually want to design some more as well since this is already made, just kind of going through my decision pro my decision making process. Mia brought up a great idea. I started making images really small to get an idea of how well you use the space. Um, so yeah, and I've seen people be on big monitors even guests that we'll have here on Adobe Live, they'll be working on their laptop and it'll be like this size, okay? Because they're almost working at it, at least the people that, hopefully my mic's not too hot. Uh, they might be working at a the final output size. So if you are, if your final destination is gonna be something like Instagram, there's honestly, in this case, there's a lot of detail that's missing, right? 
So, but uh, yeah, definitely try to make things smaller. You could also flip things and that will reveal if something look, looks right uh, as well. And a lot of illustrators will do that. They'll flip their image just to see, and it'll kind of reveal uh, if something's looking correct or not. Another way of seeing if something looks correct is leave and then come back like 20 minutes later. So breaks are really good because they allow you to just kind of approach it with fresh eyes. Ah. Uh. How long did total comp take me? This, um, I honestly, probably like five hours, I think, you know? And I could still work on it some more. Um, I had a lot of planets. I could bring in some planets. Oh, I had, I had more than just this. But here I have like this moon, if I could select it. Oh, that, that's, there's a planet here that I kind of put in the back there. And then also there's a planet right here, right? That I actually had right behind her at one time. But I decided to kind of put it out there to kind of give a, a sort of a point for light. This is actually not really realistic because there should be actually more highlights on these characters from the moon if it's right here, right? Uh, so fantastic, cool. Uh, dropping in some decorations, I could take a look adding some of these elements like these circles again just different elements to kind of break it up and make it more interesting is all i did and these came from adobe dimension just kind of rendered them out if i turn off the woman you can see them a little bit better just rendered elements and by the way like this is how they were initially when i brought them in right we can see that these are really strong so when it comes to like I would say the there's too much contrast between these gold bars, and gold elements, and the background. So I need to kind of bring it together by adding some adjustment layers off to the side. Add some levels to make sure it's the same sort of brightness, and then taking down the hue and saturation. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. Good to see you here, Rosie. Uh, yeah, so I need to work on this some more as well. Um, but so far, this is kind of how it has turned out. And I've already kind of messed this up a little bit. Let's actually roll this back to just the version that I've opened. And we can start to take a look at just again, these, these different properties, just to make sure this looks good. Uh, a lot of times when it comes to adding people, you got to see which direction they're looking. You want to technically have them look into the page and think of all lines as arrows. So there's so many arrows pointing to her. And I love how she's kind of just looking down this direction, right? Uh, these guys add drama. And this is one thing I wanted to talk about as well. Some additional things you need to think about. It's like, okay, these are all the things you use, but like, what's the goal of your piece, right? Is it interesting is what I mean by drama. Like, is it even interesting? Do I care about this woman or any of this? Does it have a point of view, right? Some, uh, some of the, that's, that's the biggest problem I see with some pieces. It's like they are um, maybe working in Photoshop and learning how to do things in Photoshop, but they don't have, uh, they don't have a point of view. All right. Let's go ahead and this, uh, did it. Let's take a look at all these. This is space, color, shape, form. Everything looks good, has all these things. Those are all the elements that we used. We can take a look at, um, you know, we have probably this texture in the, in the sky, this pattern. Obviously that looks good, I think. Um, dominance. So this is again, a, a big thing. I need, I really need to play with a new design to be honest with you. Cause I, I want to make some mistakes. Basically I want, I want things to look weird and I want you to be like, Hey, that looks weird. And I'm going to point you to an amazing resource by the way. So check this out. I don't know if you guys know about this. Let's get close out all this stuff. Here it is. Oh, I love this site. Look at this. Have you guys been to, uh, I don't even know how to say it, but it's called, uh, Rijks Museum in the Netherlands. Have you guys seen this site? So this site actually has a bunch of free images that they gladly give out. So here's a free resource that I'm going to go ahead and paste in chat. So 
So if you want to be inspired, go to the Rijksmuseum, right? You see it right in here about the museum. Uh, we can dive into the collection through the studio. So let's explore the Rijks studio. I should have actually pasted this one in as well, but we can jump right in here and take a look at uh, all these different paintings. Vermeer, right? The milkmaid. Let's say, for instance, I want to use this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a I'm going to quick make a quick poster for the Rijks Museum, uh, but I'm also showing you here. Check this out. Look, they say, hey, download this artwork and get creative. Yeah, fa sounds fantastic. Download artwork, download this image now. Yep. Oh, and they're like, hey, go ahead, put it on a shirt, put it on your car, put it on a phone, right? So I just pointed out a Vermeer uh, piece, as you can see here. We can go back to the artist. You can see Rembrandt, all sorts of cool people. Uh, uh, Jean-Baptiste Xavier. So I use a lot of um, sculptures and things like this as well. So again, we can just jump in here and grab some of these elements. Again, what I'm going to do is just make a quick poster for Reich's Museum. And I hope I'm saying that right. Cool. Let's actually double check where it is north holland yeah it's in amsterdam it's in amsterdam so cool right love this stuff look at this i might use this uh more than just picking images at random by the way uh, i use i end up using a lot of flowers myself so consider using this as a resource we'll do flowers ah uh, look at this Yes, that's what I want. Boom. Look at that. Again, I love Adobe Stock. I love, but I also love free stuff. So um, the thing about these is I'm going to have to cut them out. Uh, and they're not on white. But check that out. Boom. Done. Look at that. Gorgeous. Hello? Uh, I don't think the sound's gone. Oh, Reich's Museum. Yeah, I'm saying it right. So yeah, this is so cool. I'm gonna just grab a couple of these really fast. Oh, gorgeous. Give me a second. And we'll load these into one file and uh, get this party started. We need enough variety, right? So I'm gonna have consistency with the layout, but I wanna have a lot of variety um, when it comes to uh, the type of images because we wanna bring people into the museum. So it's a pretty easy task when you have uh, an awesome museum. Uh, what else shall we search search for? Escapes. See what happens. Landscapes. Okay. Winter landscape with ice skaters. Cool. All right. Cool, I think that works. I also wanna kinda of point out um, a couple pieces. All right, so cool. I've downloaded a number of images. They happen to all be in my downloads folder right here. I would love to talk to you about how I did the zombies, by the way. Um, the zombies I got from for, for free from Mixamo, which is actually a company um, that Adobe owns. So Adobe Mixamo right in here. I guess I've been logged out, but uh, you can get free characters and use them for your layouts as well. All right? So right in here, just to point this to, because we have not talked about this in a while. We can grab some characters. What did I do? I ended up grabbing uh, a zombie. You can see here's one of them I used and give them an animation, right? So right here, they're jumping. I was able to just grab a quick frame of this zombie and using my composition, right? Cool, that was a random tip for you. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing right in here. A number of these images I wanna use. Let's get rid of that zombie, don't need that anymore. And uh, what people will typically do is they'll open them all up. Like you'll, you'll go in here and grab a couple of them. Let's throw this away. There's another colorful piece I was working on. Um, and they'll start dragging them into uh, one window. But the easiest way to do this is go to File. And what we want to do 
is we want to load files into stack. So scripts load files into stack. We want to go browse to the images that I have. Grab all these, this one, this one, this cool one, this one, this one, and open. There they all are. And uh, load them in as layers. Done. Right? Easy enough. It's doing its job. They're really huge because the resolution is pretty high. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions. Super easy to work with that. Uh, um, another thing people used to do is actually uh, use uh, Adobe Bridge because that used to have that uh, capability. Yeah, Steve. So they're like dimension characters. And actually what I did, just going back to the Mixamo thing, which I do not have up anymore, um, you have to download the, I forget the file format. I don't know if it's like an FBX. I think it's an FBX file. I loaded that into Photoshop and then exported it out as an OBJ. And then from the OBJ, I'm able to bring that into Dimension and add the lighting to it because just Dimension is easier to work with and, uh, and then render it and then bring it back into Photoshop. All right, let's get this party started. Let's do our job. Don't. I don't think I need that anymore. Let's bring over this one. Right like that. Let's close this one. And I love designing live and I'm happy you guys are here today with me. All right, we have uh, Jason Levine up next. He's gonna be doing some audio today, which is super cool. Ah, yes. This is like Vish Vishna or something. But again, it's all these cool images. Um, first thing I wanna do, convert them to smart objects. These are really huge. That's the that's the problem. Another thing I have not done is I have not made a shortcut key to convert a layer to a smart object. Loving this art though. Uh, convert to smart object, wait for it. I could hear my um, laptop getting the fan kicking on. All right. Uh, will I be doing feedback for the Daily Creative Challenge? Not today, or not, not in my segment. Oh, you guys are funny. Okay, just do, doing a couple more. Sorry I didn't have this set up before, but the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be scaling them up and down a lot, and I want to maintain the resolution, right? Have them all pretty much done like so. They're all kind of different sizes. I can take those down. Uh, a lot of times, let's scale this down now as well. Let's get this party started. Shoo, shoo. Moving these over. Wait for it. This is really huge. So, okay, so RB mentioned something that he does not like manga, but people call it art. Uh, and whether like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, yes, in general, I agree. I personally agree with that. Um, but honestly, it's interesting when multiple people call something ugly, it actually might be ugly. So you have to take other people's opinion into account uh, when you're designing something, especially if you are a uh, commercial artist, right? Somebody else is paying you, guess what? Uh, there might be some right or wrong because they're paying you. All right, let's kind of do this. I got my different images. We can go with some of these. Scaling this up, taking this particular text, scaling this sum up as well. 
I personally am gonna do a couple different designs, so hopefully that's all right with you guys. Um, I really like, I really wanna emphasize the, the name of the museum, uh, even though I can hardly say it, right? Uh, let's make this a little larger. Actually, no, we'll just leave it, yeah, we'll make it a little larger. I think the manga art style is pretty cool. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's cool as well. My favorite is honestly like classical, um, like um, a t classic Italian paintings, like some of this Caravaggio stuff, like this stuff, this is my favorite. I love this look and I wanna implement this look somehow. I like the idea of emphasizing this text. So I'm gonna make it really large. I'm gonna use the properties panel. Uh, we're gonna create the increase the weight of this text here, make it really big and uh, fat. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using a variable concept font, allows me to control the width as I make it thicker, right? Or thinner, right? So I can do a couple of different things here. Um, we're just gonna start with one idea that I have, which is taking this text and uh, Let's tighten it up a little bit and we're gonna add some of these images to uh, this text, right? We're gonna make it look really fat. It might become hard to read and that's my first uh, thought about this. So that's why I'm just gonna do this really fast and we'll see what happens. Taking this down to the bottom like that, we have the text. I'm gonna take some of these lighter images like this flower, we'll clip it right over here, holding down the Option key or Alt key if you're on a PC, and we can clip it inside. So in this case, I'm gonna have to use a bunch of uh, lighter images, because that's the only way this is gonna stand out. Just like that, let's go over here, we like this, Milkmaid, boom, like that. Like so, you get the idea. Hello, Valder. Uh, cool. All right, let me know how you guys are doing. I'm here for you, All right? And I'm just trying to make something interesting and I'm gonna apply the uh, principles of design, which I'm gonna put off to the side right over here, okay? Type has one job, one job, okay? So I didn't get in, I'm not getting into typography. It's one job is to be legible, right? That's what type has to do at the at a bare minimum. Uh, you start treating type just like a design element, of course, right? And that's what I'm doing here. This is just kind of like a design element, but it has to be legible. Right now, this reads kind of, it's kind of tough to read, right? Because this J flows into the I. So we'll fix that really fast, going back into the properties. Remember, I tightened that up too much, maybe, 50 was too much for that spacing, the letter spacing. Let's space it out a little bit and let's drop this down to 370, making the size a little bit smaller. I could do something like this, ready? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually probably do a couple things. Please, I hope this works for you guys. I, I wanna go faster, by the way, because I don't want you to be bored. Right. I don't even know if it's okay that I put these on two lines. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, I put these on in two separate text fields. So I take this one, I can make it larger if I want to, just using the scale, to, scale tool, right? Make it much bigger like so, right? Now we can center this in a position. Since I have this text larger, we're gonna be able to see those paintings in here much clearer, right? And uh, I don't even know if I'm crazy about that background being black. I actually might change it. All right. But let's do this. So now that I have two layers, um, I wanna actually clip this flower to both 
I could I want to clip them to uh, both text elements and I can't do that I can only clip it to one well what you can do in this case select both layers command G group now they're in one group let's move that out actually and this could be my text and now what I could do is I could clip it to that layer group and now I can move it across both of those text elements. So that will be fun to do. Um, anyways, I'm just gonna kinda jump in and work with this a little bit. I think for a lot of these, shall we go with a lighter background color? I think we're going to, cause right, what's gonna happen is I feel like this feels really heavy. Um, yeah, so background maybe a shade of statue marble. Okay, that's this is what I'm talking about, feedback, I love it. I want these suggestions, because honestly, I want to know how you are th thinking, basically, right? I think typically ma people make the mistake of over-designing stuff, right? Wait for it. It's going to come to life. This is a, a Rembrandt right here, so Rem R for Rembrandt. Right. If I was, uh, if I spent more time on this, I'd probably want would a good way to sell this into the client would to put some more thought into this. So whatever artist started with K, well, they would be inside of the K, like so. Right. So again, if I was a smarter man or if I had more time, that's what I'd consider doing. As long as the design doesn't sacrifice, get sacrificed. All right, Mia likes the uh, still likes the gradient background. Yeah, honestly, I will probably um, revisit that in a little bit as soon as I have a lot of this put together. But typically, this is like design number one. I'm just kind of starting out. Some of this stuff might not work, to be honest with you. And honestly, one thing that's not working about it is there's not enough variety in these um, uh, different pieces. Because I want to show my whole goal, and this goes back to like, what's what's the goal you're trying to achieve? Like, what 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 are you really trying to do? Uh, ultimately, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sell this museum. This museum, by the way, when I was searching, has over like a million uh, pieces of artwork that you could search online for free, which is awesome. Uh, but I want to show the variety of all their pieces. So I think I'm actually going to jump right in here and actually oh, select some different styles right in here. Let's grab this one. Drop that in. There it is. Zip. There it is. Cool. Done. Done. Move this back over. Uh, so when you're creating art, you must be careful with what composition you use or present. Uh, exactly, yeah. Um, yes, composition is huge. And honestly, I should spend more time kind of showing you horrible compositions. <laughs> I think people learn more from mistakes, which is why we uh, have a lot of portfolio reviews, uh, rather than how things are going well. Like right now, this is I'm gonna have to deal with the issue of whether this is gonna be legible or not. Right? I can see this part is going to be uh, a little bit difficult. Guess what? We'll add an adjustment layer right down here because we, of course, want it to be darker. So I'll just go into brightness and contrast. And we'll drop down the brightness, but I want it to just be on that. So what's happening now is I clipped it to this flower layer. So I have a clipping, a clipped layer. This is being, is already a clipped layer. And this is actually clipped to the clipping layers. So we're actually a couple layers deep. Actually, does that work? Yeah, it should be. Oh, it does to the whole thing. All right. So. This is probably what I would do in this case. Um, I'd probably open up this. In, this is, happens to be a smart object. And then I would add an adjustment layer right in here. 
I thought it was doing something that it was not doing. Okay, there we go. We'll just see how that looks. Inner glow or inner stroke, Steve? Honestly, I would never, I wouldn't, I just would not do that. Uh, I wouldn't add a get inner glow or inner stroke because I think it would, um, it would add complexity to it that isn't needed, right? When, if I added a stroke, that's just, I don't know, it's just like more data. It just, it just would, I personally don't think it would look good. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Don't, don't hate me for that opinion, but I just do not think it will look good. Uh, the cool thing is, is actually we should be able to try that. Let's do this right here. Uh, let's get a couple more pieces in and then we'll start experimenting. Let's get some, actually, yes, I could use some of these sculptures. Clipping that, wait for it, wait for it. Let's get this one maybe up here. I don't know. We'll have to play with this. That's all we're doing. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Appreciate you hanging out. Let's go ahead and wait for it. Sorry, I'm not. I'm talking to you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to break up these because actually, I want to have. I have consistency. It already has consistency. I'm adding variety by having different images in here. Um, but I also want to have consistency with this because if I have just all like Renaissance paintings or if it seems to be, it, it wasn't looking random and I'm creating some randomness, but I want to be consistent with all that randomness. So I want to have an equal number of these fun uh, Renaissance style paintings and some of these flowers and non paintings. So I'm just trying to create that nice balance with all of them. That's the plan. Ah, she'd be really good right there in the eye. Let's do it. I'm going to be going for, oh good. I still have like 10 minutes. This is awesome. Let's make it happen. Let's make dreams come true folks. Let's make this larger. There we go. Kind of like that. Let's mask it out. Got some funky jazz playing, I guess. So yeah, that might be good. Steve, what I would actually do there is any part that's missing, and let me get this M squared away and then we'll talk. We'll take this in the next level here. Move this over. This is gonna be really light. So here's a big issue. When it comes to legibility, um, you can mess with the inside letters but you can't mess with the outside letters typically. So the fact that I'm losing this M isn't working for me, right? Let's actually make this a little larger for everyone. Oop, something like that. All right, so that's why I'm gonna move this one in. We'll take this painting, we'll move this over here like so, right? Kind of like that. Let's play with it. Let's try to add some nice balance. Let's make sure some of these only cover up certain parts, certain parts of the letters. Move this over here like so. And mask it out as well. So not only are these clipping masks, the clipping masks have masks. Yeah, they need to be anchors. You got it, Steve. You are the man. You are the man. I appreciate it. All right, got some other pieces right in here, right? So there we go. Um, we kind of have poster number one done. <sighs> Wait for it. We got this fun. Jazz plan. Okay, let's do this. Let's just put this address in here, right? As a little line underneath, right? Make this black. Make it lighter and smaller. There we are. There's our little line right down here. It's just like where it is, right? Or whatever. 
Okay, cool. All right, let's play with this some more. Steve says it looks great. Thank you, Steve. You're too kind. I'm going to save this. Haven't even saved the file. It's really straightforward. I'll call this museum. I don't know if it's that interesting. Let's start playing with some different things like pattern and texture, by the way, as I take a look over here, right? So we have our different elements. Ugh. Giving me grief. Right over here, some elements of design. So let's add some, a couple more elements. First off, you know what? This is getting really washed out. Since I added that brightness and contrast, actually does not make it look that good, right? I'm okay to say it. You guys can call this ugly, because you know what? You might be right. Let's just turn that off, right? I'm gonna get rid of that brightness and contrast layer. I just think it washes it out too much. Let's save it. Let's close that. Let's go back in here, wait for it. Oh, it looks like they have those one of a balance card, a little white balance card. All right, so uh, bring in this, clip it like so. Bam. There we go. All right, inverting this mask, hitting B for brush, because now what I want is I want just some parts of this to be a little darker. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of just darkening that a little bit. What do you guys think? Okay, you guys think it looks really good. I think it has issues. Uh, it's just not there yet. I think it could use a background. I think the, the brandy, the flowers are gorgeous. You're exactly right. We could do a couple things here. First thing I wanna do is I actually want to find like a gorgeous background. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to find one like right now. I don't have one like, you know, at the ready to be honest with you. Um, but I kind of know what I'm going for, which is going to be like Rembrandt used a lot of light. So like he painted with light. So if I, if I take a look at some of his stuff, I might be able to take one of his paintings maybe and turn it into, uh, put it in the background. Like this one, for instance, this is the perfect sort of idea that I'm kind of going for. I actually want something lighter, to be honest with you. Uh, there was the mention of using marble, but again, I'm just trying to find elements of design to use in this case. I think something with marble, oh, we have this reclining lion. This might work as well, because that's lighter. So I'll probably start with that one. Let's take a look, let's take the lion, copy it, throw it in the background. There's my text. Is this going to work? Is it not going to work? It can possibly work, maybe. All right, let's play with this some more. These letters need to be darker, so I'm just grabbing some darker elements, right? So we have this gorgeous flower. These gorgeous flowers are absolutely love. Right there, that makes it a little bit darker. Right there, and I might just need to find some different pieces for some of this. And keep in mind, I could still add an adjustment layer. I can go into add levels. Make that look a little bit darker. Invert it. B for brush. Painting in darker for that S. Ah, okay. Mia still wants the gradient background. All right. And again, it gets a little muddy in here, right? I was, I kind of just like this paper texture, and I hate to do this to uh, a Rembrandt sketch. How dare I, right? But I want to grab a lot of this. Oh, actually, you know what? I could do this. I can move this down here. All right, let's do this. I'm messing with Rembrandt's sketch. Don't tell him. Let's just do content aware fill to get rid of that line because I just want the texture. All right, because it looks a little muddy there. Uh, gradients can be made, yeah, for the static picture using capture. Oh, yeah. 
we can take a look at that. If we want to add more patterns, we have a whole new patterns panel and I can make a pattern with one of these uh, paintings. So there we go, that looks better. And I would probably, just to be honest with you, start adding a new layer, clipping it, and then painting inside right here. So parts that need to be a little bit darker, I just start painting some of that like so. Okay, so if you want me to try a background pattern, we can do that really fast. Um, I People love this. I, I freaking love, I just like flowers. I'm sorry, I just do. I just like flowers. Let's take this image. Since you we talked about making patterns, this might work in the background. I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna go to my library panel and let's just rasterize this layer. I just love these flowers. I'm going to be making some things with these. Uh, I'm just gonna select this right here. Might be a little complex. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, whew. All right, so I wanna show you this. I actually just got a little bit concerned here because I had a, a wolf typed in here. I typed something in my search. So, and then I left it alone, I closed it, I came back, I'm like, oh, where's all my stuff? It's because I had something typed in there. So it's only giving me those search results, but not only that, it doesn't highlight anything that you can add. Because what I wanna add is I wanna clear that out. So if you run into the, if these are ever not active, maybe you're in a search query. Uh, so I'm gonna add content right here and I'm gonna create from image, right? Right down there. So this is like adding, using capture um, on your phone, but you're actually using Photoshop. So here we are, here's the, the pattern. We can see these flowers in here and we can get something potentially pretty unique. I, I know already off the bat there's issues with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my CC library right here. Save to CC libraries. It's gonna save it, we won't see it there because it, there it is. Actually, it's loading in now, boop, there it is. Right, so we can do this a couple times. We could try a couple different patterns as well, like that, save to CC libraries. I could save this as a shape, saving to CC libraries. I can work with that detail and uh, then we can even dive into color themes and I can save that to the CC libraries. Again, all from, from one image. Uh, I think this is important when you pick colors from an image because you never want to choose a color just to choose a color, so. Okay, fix the pick in the R. <laughs> You got it, right? And then we have gradients that we can also uh, create. But let's close that. You can see that content right over here. Uh, since you wanna try potentially adding a pattern, we can drop in this pattern like so. Let's move this. And we can see how busy that is. Oh, you, the, oh so sorry. Fix the R, thank you so much. Right, right over here, right? Um, what I can always do is you hold down the command key and click, it'll go right to that layer. Another thing you can do is hold down the option key and now I'm gonna click and it's gonna go right to the R, okay? So we could navigate around this all day long, super easy uh, and fix those little issues that are gonna drive people nuts. So you can tell already what happened. This is too much. It's too much. It's ugly. Can you say ugly? Oh, I gotta go down. I gotta go in like two minutes. Uh, this is what I have so far. Again, this pattern isn't working. This is kind of the final I have. I will work on uh, tweaking this, the legibility, and I'm gonna post it to Instagram. So that's the plan, uh, P-T-R-A-N-I, as we wind down uh, right now. Um, yeah, definitely looks like Bob Dylan. Very mysterious, and I'm kind of like into it. Anytime you add faces, they're gonna they're gonna get a lot of attention over over other elements. But the idea is you're supposed to wander through this poster uh, and be interested in going to the museum, of course. So yeah, I'll spend some more time on this. Thanks so much for watching. Keep all this stuff in mind. Have a point of view. Know what you're trying to say for sure. Use the elements 
And then if something's not looking right, you just need to check with the principles of design. Like what's what's fighting? What's what's what is your eye doing? How does your eye flow through this? I could go on and on because right now there's this hole right here. There's this white space that I need to work on. It's not consistent yet, but you get the idea. And I just appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and learning what you can. We're all just trying to get better in life, I would think. And um, I'm also going to get better with audio and video because Jason is the master and he's up next. Uh, sound design uh, part two, and uh, that will be huge. So uh, thank you so much. You guys have a great day. I appreciate you. Stay in touch. Jason is up.